Those displaced by war face a new threat, the weather. A waterlogged field is now home. If the rain continues, they'll be forced to leave. But where can they go? Going there and seeing, you know, these innocent women and children literally freezing to death was was beyond heartbreaking. It was it was tragic. It was a catastrophe and it's not something that you can really put into words unless you actually go there and connect yourself with those people. It's really hard to imagine what those elements are like. <laughs> We left our homes without any possessions. You can see the rainwater around us. You can see for yourself how bad conditions are. What can we do? We're helpless. This winter has been cold with the rain and I haven't got any money to buy any firewood or money to buy fuel. This winter we haven't received anything. You're seeing people that are without proper blankets even, without proper jackets, without proper footwear, who will do anything to bear the, the harshness of the cold. It opened my eyes to the neglect of the Syrian people. Our lives are as nothing. We have nothing but fear. Fear from illness, from the rain, and there's nothing to keep warm with. Really, the situation is bad. There are so many of us. How can they provide for everyone? We are cold, there is no electricity. I have two children, and there are no diapers for them. I'm forced to back from my friends and family. We're over here debating whether or not they're human enough to be accepted in our country and to be resettled in different places in the world. We're over here debating whether or not they are barbaric or inherently violent. And they're just trying to fight to live. I've been here for three days, but after all I've seen in this camp, I'm claiming my right to go back to Syria. There's killing there, but here we live worse than animals. What kind of existence is this? Refugees complain about the quality of water, toilets, and the harsh desert winter. They describe the frustration of spending hours in queues only to find out supplies have run out. If I stayed in Syria, it would have been better for me. They would have killed me, yes, but it's better than coming here and being humiliated like this. I'm a sick old man, why must I go through this? Giving for the sake of Allah shows that you trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that's the secret behind sadaqah. Because we tend to trust what we can see with our own eyes and what we can feel with our own skin. So when, when you want to spend, shaitan will say, you have children. Shaitan will say, you're planning to buy a house. You want to get this, you're saving money for this. Shaitan promises you, he says, if you pay for the sake of Allah, if you spend from your money, then you will not get it back. You will become poor and you will struggle yourself. Shaitan promises you poverty and Allah promises you bounty from him, gifts from him, more from him and forgiveness. And forgiveness. I think that uh, it is absolutely essential that the international community understands that to support the Syrian refugees and to support Jordan, Lebanon and all the other countries that are receiving the Syrian refugees is not a matter of generosity, it's not a matter of solidarity, it's a matter of self-interest. Uh, it's one thing to see people through a Facebook video. It's another thing to sit with them. It's another thing to actually see the conditions and experience the conditions that they are living in. We cannot continue to speak about these people like they're essentially not people. They're human beings. Too many people and not enough help. There are shortages of food, blankets, medical supplies, just about everything. We had nothing when we left our homes. Why is this happening? Why isn't anyone here to help us? They have a right to live in peace and in security. And if we're not contributing to the betterment of their situation, then we ourselves need to question ourselves into who we claim to be. Are we really the moral standard for the world? 
So from now on, any kind of opportunity for you to spend for the sake of Allah, see it in the beautiful light. That it's an opportunity for you to grow in faith. It's an opportunity for you to trust Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and demonstrate your trust. It's an opportunity for you to get more reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and also to grow your wealth. See it in your mind's eye. See it in your heart and it will, and it will become, become a reality. Almost 10 years into the Syrian conflict, over 600,000 Syrians have sought refuge in Jordan. Winter in Jordan is harsh, especially for families who are living in unheated and temporary shelters. Temperatures drop below freezing in many parts of the country, bringing further misery and suffering to entire communities living there. This winter, Task Force GLM will provide emergency winter provisions and food for refugees and vulnerable families as part of an emergency response to the harsh winter conditions. Each family will be provided with a gas heater, fuel, food, clothing, blankets, hygiene kits and fuel vouchers. The family winter pack is £300 and can help to save an entire family through the harsh winter conditions. Or you can donate towards an individual winter pack for just £60. To donate, please go to taskforcegrlm.org forward slash winter. The links are also in the description of this video.